Hello, and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change. I'm here to guide you from frustration to flow in your life, bridging the practical and the woo just for you. Let's go. Hey, Change Gang, welcome to the week. Way back in episode four, I believe, I did a little chatting about acceptance, acceptance and change. And I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into that today, talk about it. I was having a conversation with someone and, and so it seemed like a good time to do this. So acceptance, coming to a place of acceptance in our lives isn't about giving up or giving in to something that we do not want. Instead, it's allowing the energy of change to move through us with ease and comfort. Obviously, there's usually something of a catalyst that comes into our life and starts the process of change for us, which I talked about in that other episode, uh, along with the episode on the catalyst. Uh, It could be something wonderful and sometimes something not so wonderful. We have things like this happening all the time on a smaller scale, right? Daily things that adjust our schedule, change our focus, move our day or week around. But it's when those things are on the larger side that come in, like marriage or divorce, birth, death, a big career change, or maybe an illness or an injury. Now, this is when things really kick it up a notch. This is when the brain wakes up and pretty much freaks out. And here's something I will continue to repeat all the time, but I'm going to say now in case this is the first time you've maybe heard me have a conversation about this, but our minds love repetition. The subconscious wants repetition. It loves to have things happen over and over and feel safe in that loop. That circle that starts out one way, heads in a familiar direction, and then closes the circle right back where it needs to be. No getting off track or going another way. It just wants to stay in that same loop, on that same track. That is why change can sometimes be so difficult. That no matter how much willpower you have or you put into something, trying to change in some way, it just doesn't seem to work. It doesn't seem to stick. Because your subconscious goes back to that loop. It's going against you basically. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't change. It doesn't mean that that can't happen. It just means that it's trying and it's got really good intentions. All right. It's always seeking to fulfill a positive intention. I'm not saying that's always the outcome, just the intention. So when something comes up that shakes it up, that shakes everything up in your life, the subconscious goes into protection mode, goes into that freak out along the way, okay? It's going to take in that catalyst, that thing that's happened, that thing that is bringing change, and it's going to try to find a way to stay safe, all right, to fight against that. One way it does that is fear. It will ignite fear. It's a go-to for. It's been doing it since the caveman days. Fight, flight, freeze. You've probably heard of that. And we all respond to different situations with a different version of that. Sometimes we have one that kicks in that's pretty substantial for us. And that tends to be where we go regularly. But anyway, so fear kicks in. All of the what ifs show up. The stories start to spin out and take you into the depths of the deepest, darkest pits you can imagine. Our imagination is a crazy wild thing, isn't it? And this is your subconscious trying to keep you from that change, to keep you safe. If you move into that change, oh my gosh, your subconscious thinks, oh, you might die. Because sometimes the subconscious is a bit of a drama queen. And that's okay. Because you always have a way around it. You always have a way to go in and have a conversation with the subconscious, to work with it, right? To get around that fear, to move through it, to get to the other side. And often, you know, we have actual fears that come in through that. Sometimes, though, we have those irrational fears. The pool shark ones. The ones that say, oh, is there a shark in that pool? Even though you know, absolutely, there's not a shark in the pool. 
doesn't mean it doesn't feel like you're feeling the fear. It doesn't mean that you're not breathing in a way that feels crazy or that your brain is telling you all these stories about how it is possible that a shark is in that pool. But maybe no one else has sharks in pools. Is that just me? Huh. Anyway, it could be whatever version it is for you and that's okay. It could be some crazy thing that comes up that your brain says, no, you can't do that because this might happen whether it's rational or not. And it's important to know that that might pop up. Your mind has that incredible imagination to play with and your subconscious is not afraid to use it. So here's where you can shift things and move into that space of acceptance, okay? This is where you back the truck up a bit and you have that conversation with your brain, with your subconscious that is telling you all about this dire situation uh, if you bring change into your life. So this is where you take control of your story, all right? Your imagination is in your control and you get to intentionally tell a different story, a different story. I'm going to share a little bit of my story in a situation like this right now. So this is a bit of an example. Uh, as a lot of you know, in 2020, like so many others, I was gifted with that lovely coronavirus, as was my husband, and it was awful. Thankfully, neither of us ended up in the hospital. My husband kind of went down hard for about four or five days, but then he rallied back. He came back. He felt better. He got to move on in life. Me, not so much. I kept feeling awful. And of course, I was off work at the time. And so they were constantly checking in with me. They didn't know what to expect, what was going on, uh, you know, all of the different things that were coming down on a daily basis, but they checked in with me literally every day. And it was okay until it wasn't. I felt a constant pressure to get better and I was not getting better. And I had no idea why. I was seeing my doctor literally, if not every week, every couple of weeks, going in, trying to find out what's going on, running test after test after test. And some things, yeah, were coming back, but nothing to really grab a hold of and say, here's why you're feeling so crappy. So there was a lot of just constant things going on and a lot of pressure and these daily calls that were coming from my employer. And one of those daily calls came in and I was particularly exhausted and I couldn't answer their questions about when I would be back. Um, I couldn't imagine getting out to do the job because I actually had a pretty physical job uh, in that situation. And at this point, I was really lucky to just be showering and feeding myself. I'm not even sure that happened every day, to be honest, because some days I just didn't have the energy. I didn't have the energy. Uh, maybe I could only do one. Uh, it was feeding myself, you know, and maybe the next day I, I did shower, but the food had to slack a little bit. It was that hard. And so when this call came on this particular day about asking me when I could return to work, what could I do? I'll, I just started crying, crying because I didn't know what to do. And I asked them, what, what do you want me to do? I don't know what to do. I, I don't know what's happening. I don't understand it. My doctor doesn't, can't tell me anymore. You know, people in the world, I know some people are getting better. I, I don't know what's happening. And I wasn't able to give them any answer. And I was very aware of the fact that they wanted me to get back to work, but I just literally could not function. And I'll just say at this point, after that breakdown uh, and after all the tears, they did kind of back off a bit. They, they quit calling every day. They gave me a little space to heal at this point, but it was still hard. And I was in this position of not understanding what was going on with my body. My mind wasn't working properly. No one really had answers. And it was just a really hard place to be. So I had to make some decisions. I had to change the story around my daily life. And there came a point where, you know, my doctor told me you might want to do some research into chronic fatigue syndrome and along the way I was actually able to connect and find out that I wasn't quite 
you know, the crazy person that I felt like I was because there were a lot of people going through what I was going through. And it was being called long hauler syndrome. So, okay, I have a syndrome. (laughs) I could let my mind carry me along and see what that looks like living in a quote unquote syndrome and how it would take things away from me daily. Uh, I could fight against it and put all of this tiny bit of energy I had into denying what was going on to pushing myself to exhaustion constantly to try and do what was expected of me um, as in getting up and doing whatever during the day. Uh, But I wasn't sure. Was that the right thing to do? Do you give up? Do you fight? What do you do? And then I realized I could accept the situation and move on from there. So I chose to live inside the experience of the life that was happening around me. And I chose to still be okay. I'm going to say that again. I chose to live inside the experience of the life that was happening around me. And I chose to still be okay. Maybe I wasn't going to be able to do some of the things I could do before. And hey, guess what? The house maybe wasn't going to be cleaned as often as before unless there was some outside help involved. And I might never, oh, this was a sad part, but I had to accept that maybe I might never like strawberries again because that was something that during this whole process my taste buds could not accept berries anymore and I love them but that was not the end of everything right it was not was it something I would choose no but I had to choose to accept that to write my story in a way that all of a sudden all of that was absolutely okay. Everything was absolutely okay. It did not mean that I was not going to try to continue to do things. It did not mean I was giving up. There is a difference in giving up and accepting. Giving up is the energy of failure, of defeat. Acceptance is the energy of peace and permission very, very different. The peace to know that you are already okay. And then it's time to tell yourself another story from where you are. And the permission to be the version of yourself that you are in the current moment and know that that's exactly the best version you can be currently. And that's awesome. So continue to write your own story and adjust it with new little details all along the way that will bring you happiness. Bring in that, hey, strawberries aren't so bad today. They, they don't taste as bad as they did yesterday. Or bring in the hopes of what you want to experience along with accepting where you're at, giving yourself that permission to be the version of yourself in the moment. All right? Bring in those thoughts of happiness and adjusting into those new and wonderful conclusions to the current situation and beyond. Accepting does not mean giving up those things right? You're always going to be bringing in the details of those new, wonderful ways and conclusions to the current situation. So do that. Be in that space and continue to accept and bring wonderful things into your life in that place of acceptance because you are amazing and you have amazing things coming your way. That's it for this week. Can't wait to join you right back here next week. Until then, ciao. I hope today's episode was interesting to you in some way and fun. If so, hey, find someone to share it with. Maybe they need to hear it too, or maybe they'll just enjoy it. 
If you'd like, go ahead and grab my tips on supercharging your success. It includes a free short meditation to do just that. You can find that at bit.ly slash supercharge your success. Until next time, happy day.